Steve Dace joining us from the Michigan podcast, and you can join him right there. Look it up on YouTube. I'm going to probably butcher the various uh, audio platforms that you have it on. So, Steve, just take it away. Let people know where they can find you uh, for the audio version as well. Uh, Detroit Sports Podcast, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, and Google Play. There you, you go. So get to just the audio only version of Michigan Podcast. Michigan Podcast. It is uh, just a full blown, not just Michigan football, but a, a take on the Big Ten and the national scene as well. And Steve provides some tremendous analysis and has some great guests as well. Uh, Steve, when you look at this Wisconsin team, I don't know how uh, much you've gotten to see. Uh, the Badgers probably about as much as I do because I know you're going crazy watching just about as much as you possibly can. And I've seen quite a bit of Wisconsin football and it's the same outfit that we typically see year to year. Uh, limitations on the perimeter, limitations at quarterback, a, a big strong running back who is physically uh, just beyond his freshman uh, status uh, as a physical runner in Jonathan Taylor and a stout of front seven on defense. Maybe the secondary could be abused by uh, some some different teams in, in another conference that might be able to take advantage of uh, some speed mismatches, but uh, it's just a fundamentally sound uh, football team. That's a good way of explaining it. Um, I, I don't think that this is their most talented team. I, for example, I would say that a uh, team they had last year when you know Jazz Peavy and Troy Fumagalli were healthy the whole year and uh, you had, um, you know, uh, T.J. Watt and Jack Sitchi and some of those guys at linebacker. This is I don't think it's their most talented team. I think it's a really good team. I think it's a really good team that is largely the byproduct of um, a Charmin soft schedule. I think Michigan's record is largely the byproduct of its schedule. I, I, we're, we're acting like, you know, we, we've learned a lot more about Wisconsin. It's funny because at this time last two weeks ago, everybody thought Ohio State was going to name the score against Iowa. Shocking result, Iowa wins, right? And so suddenly, like, Iowa's like, great, you know? And then when they get a reality check against Wisconsin, Wisconsin has suddenly gone from who have they beaten? They might go 13-0 and not make the playoff to they're great. I mean, I go back to what Lou Holtz said many years ago, Mark. The beauty, if not nightmare, of coaching college football is you are literally coaching a different team each week. And I think Wisconsin, because of the distribution of their best talent, and the way they're made up is a better football team than Michigan. Now, I think man one to eight to 50 to 85, I should say. I thought about the NFL for a second. I think man one to 85, it's, it's really not even close. Okay. But a lot of that talent from Michigan are freshmen and sophomores. The big challenge for Wisconsin in this game, I believe, is, is right up here. Uh, this is a program that, is, that has never been this way before. They've never been 11 and 0 before. I don't think they've even been 10 and 0 before. And even though they've enjoyed an immense amount of respect since Barry Alvarez reestablished that program in 1993 with that first Rose Bowl team, you go back through all of those teams with one exception, and that was uh, the year that uh, they went to the Rose Bowl. I think that was Ron Dane's senior year, and they beat Stanford, and Ty Willingham was kind of a surprise out of the, the Pac-12 that year, or Pac-10 back then. They're always the underdog. Hell, Mark, one year they, they won the Big Ten. They finished 8-6. and six. They're always that team that's picked third, fourth, or fifth and the best in the league. And the standard bearers, you know, Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State, and then lately Michigan State, they have the searing spotlight. And, you know, Wisconsin kind of just sits around and, you know, um, usually plays nobody in the non-conference. And then, you know, a few years ago, they played an overrated LSU team actually just last year and got a big win there. They're a nice, solid program. I will be fascinated, though, that, that's had a lot of success, but I will be fascinated to see how they handle this moment. They have, I mean... Uh, Probably not since the mid-60s have they been the standard bearer for the Big Ten Conference, and they are right now. Game day is coming there. It's the only game of ranked opponents in the country. Uh, you have everybody on campus looking at the Wolverines with a redshirt freshman quarterback making only his fourth start, second on the road. How, how mercurial Michigan has been to ineffective offensively. And you know they are licking their chops, and the confidence level has to be high and that's, that's not their M.O. I mean, their M.O. is chip on the shoulder. Their M.O. is, you know, LSU's coming up to Lambeau. They th everybody's going to th think they, they're going to name the score and run Leonard Fournette down our throats. We're not putting up with that. We're going out to the Rose Bowl. We had no shot against Kate McNown in UCLA. That's, that's been their identity. And I'm going to be fascinated to see how they handle having the shoe on the other foot. Because I can just tell you, 
even though we haven't been the Michigan we've been known as until Harbaugh came back for the decade prior to when he returned, we were averaging seven wins a year. But, you know, before that, I grew up in an era where we essentially got everybody's best shot every single week. And I, and I, and that takes some getting used to, it takes some adjusting and it's hard because, you know, we always had that one game under Lloyd Carr. Why'd they lose that game? Well, you're, unless you're unless you're recruiting like Nick Saban, where you're way up here and everybody else is down here, you're going to have those kinds of games when you're everybody's circle, circle the the date. Hell, Nick Saban of all of his national championship teams, only one of them went undefeated. It's it's tough when you are the pace car, when you're the brand. It is tough to 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 maintain those expectations and manage them. Wisconsin as a program has never had to do that before. And if Michigan pulls the upset on Saturday, I think their inability to handle it would be a huge reason why. Yeah, so the framework that you build is interesting because, yeah, Wisconsin has never been that program. It's always been Michigan, Ohio State, those two most notably. And during the last 25 years, you go back to the the Barry Alvarez uh, 93 team because that was just uh, for those folks out there that don't know uh, delve into college football history or a little bit younger. Wisconsin was completely off the map from the late 50, early 60s. They had a famous Rose Bowl game against USC in, I believe, 1963. Yeah, uh, that was number one versus number two. <laughs> That's the era I was talking about. Yeah. So then for about 30 years, Wisconsin was completely generally off the map, uh, barely getting to a Garden State Bowl, I remember, in 1979 in particular, but just completely off the college football map. They explode in 1993. They get to a Rose Bowl, uh, but never the program in the Big Ten, uh, lightly regarded, uh, generally preseason, usually underrated. But in any of those particular years, if they could have been made an argument, Steve, that they were the standard bearer, that particular team, not as a program, it wasn't in this setting of a playoff so it was as a 10 and 2 wisconsin team okay you're just playing for a ranking or to be able to put a rose bowl banner up in the stadium it wasn't with the pressure of trying to make a playoff a national playoff uh, so this is a completely different world in which they're they're operating now no question all right steve dace uh joining us uh, michigan podcast you got to join him right there on uh on YouTube in particular, also the audio platforms of Stitcher and iTunes as well.